Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Alice Bay and Don Amici in Vivacious Lady. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, and a salute, an extra special grade A four-star salute to 1941. We haven't got a crystal ball handy, so we can't predict what the hit plays of this new year will be. But we can make another prediction, that whatever those hits are, we'll have the cream of the crop right here in the Lux Radio Theater. And that goes for the star crop, too. But tonight, since 1941 is yet too young to have plays of its own, we bring you a comedy that would be a hit in any year. Vivacious Lady, with two stars who'd pack any theater, Alice Fay and Don Amici. You'll hear Don as a young college professor in this adaptation of the RKO picture. A professor who acquires a beautiful torch singer as a bride, brings her back to college and totally upsets the academic calm of the campus. Alice Fay is the lady, the vivacious lady, who won't uh, put up with academic calm, especially when it involves the man she loves. It's a situation that producers call box office, and that's how we want to start the new year. You see, our box office is very different from the kind they have in ordinary theaters. And our box office reports tell a unique story. They tell of an audience that covers an entire continent. An audience we have to please in two ways. With our plays and with our product, Lux Flakes. Here in the Lux Radio Theater, it takes plenty of good hard work to please you. But once you've tried it, we don't have to worry about our product pleasing you. Summing up for the year 1940, our box office story has a happy ending because the mailbag is heavier than ever. From Boston Harbor to the Golden Gate, more women are finding Lux Flakes indispensable at home. And now we begin 1941 on a very optimistic note by raising the curtain on the first act of Vivacious Lady, starring Don Amici as Peter and Alice Fay as Francie. There's a hot time in the Club Velasquez tonight. Cover charge, $2. The Velasquez is strictly a formal spot. That's why Peter Morgan looks so out of place. Attired in a light spring suit and top coat, he stands near the entrance, his eyes roving anxiously around the room. He's twisting his hat in his hands. That's a mistake, too. No gentleman in a New York nightclub is permitted to remain in possession of his hat. Check your hat, mister. Hmm? Oh, of course, yes. Thank you. Say, uh, uh, maybe you could help me. I'm looking for a Mr. Keith Beston. Have you seen him? Mister, we haven't seen anything but Mr. Beston since last Tuesday. Oh, then he's here? Yeah, at this table on the right near the wall. Thank you, thank you. All right. Keith. Keith. Well, well, Peter. Peter. Keith, I've been looking all over for you. This is the tenth place I've been in. Why, Professor, you sound bitter. We haven't got much time. Come on, you have to hurry. Oh, sit down, Peter. I can't. Do you know what time it is? Don't you realize we have to catch a train for old Sharon? Oh, now, don't you worry. Don't worry. This is the last time I'm going to act as your nursemaid when you come to New York for one of these semi-annual frolics. Now, come on. No, I'm not going to budge from this chair till the girl I've just fallen in love with says she'll marry me. Oh, so that's it. Well, it's a good thing I found you. Oh, Peter, she's beautiful, exciting. You aren't serious. I am serious. You haven't any monopoly on seriousness. Who is this girl? A girl. She sings here like a bird. Now, listen, Keith. The 4 a.m. train leaves at exactly 4 a.m., and I'm going to be on it, and so are you. Waiter. Yes, sir. Give this man a check. I'm going to get your hat and coat, Keith. Take your time, Professor. There I go, pleading Miss with my heart Sure. And do you mind if I use your phone? Go ahead, but it'll cost you. Hello. Hello. Long distance, please. Hey, Charlie. Long distance. All right. I'll take care of it. Uh, long distance, I want to speak to old Sharon, Pennsylvania. Yes, old Sharon, 242. Reverse the charge. I want to speak to Peter Morgan, Sr. And if you can't get him at that number, try the university. Thank you. He's the president, you know. Yeah, what's Roosevelt doing? I mean the president of the university. Oh. He hello. Hello, Dan. Hello, Dad. This is Peter. Shh. There's a number going well, it's on. long distance. Uh, hello, Dad. Dad, I found him. If you shout any louder, you won't need that phone. Look, uh, look Dad, I'm in a nightclub. Now, 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 don't get excited. I'm leaving right away. 
What? It's a girl this time. How's the mother doing? She's fine. What? Yes, yes, Dad. You know the type of girl you find in these places. Well, if there are any entanglements, I'll straighten them out. All right, Dad. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Miss. Give my love to Mother, Sonny. Now, listen, Keith. I just phoned old Sharon at... Oh. Hello. Uh, how do you do? Where's Keith? I, I don't know. He was uh, sitting right here, and I, I, I... Well, he disappeared while I was doing my number. Oh, then you... Uh, then, then you... Oh, oh, oh. Well, what's the matter? Uh, nothing, nothing. I, I, I just didn't expect you to be... Uh, I, mean, I mean, I expected you to be... Uh, oh, you're, you're so different. Say, hey, are you swack? I beg your pardon? I said, are you tight? Uh, no, no, I'm not intoxicated, if that's what you mean. Well, that's what I meant, all right. No, I'm, I'm just... Uh, well, the only way I can explain it, uh, I can't. Well, that's clear. I, uh, I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, yes, will you? Mr. Bestian asked me to tell you he's gone to the hotel to pack. He'll meet you on the train to Old Sharon. Oh, uh, thank you. Yes. Well, I guess I, uh, I better get along. Yeah, I guess you better. That friend of yours needs somebody to take care of him. Well, that's what I'm here for. Uh, Keith and I are cousins. Oh, cousins? Yes. You know, you know, I think he's a little wacky. I've only known him a week, but every night since, he's asked me to marry him. And every time I say no, he gets wackier. Well, I was appointed a committee of one. The folks thought it'd be an excellent idea if I came along and saw that he got home safely. Yeah, it's a good thing you're here. Look, is there anything the matter with me? What? I mean, is my hair on crooked or something? The way you keep looking at me, I, I'm getting a little uncomfortable. Why, well, I'm sorry. You, uh, you see, this is the first time I've never spoken to an actress. Well, well, I'm not exactly an actress. I'm a singer. Oh, oh. So oh. you don't have to be afraid. Uh, do you sing again tonight? No, no, that was my last show. Oh, all, all finished. No, all finished. Yeah, uh, uh, have a cigarette? No, thanks. Uh, uh, something to drink? No, no, I never use it. No, oh, I uh, couldn't get you anything to eat. Huh? Yes. Yes, I believe I would like something to oh, eat. Oh, fine. fine. Uh, waiter. Oh, no, 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 not in here. The food's terrible here. Oh, well, then... Well... Do you want to take me out or don't you? Oh, oh yes, yes, I do. I, I, I want to take, take you out very much. <laughs> well, how about it? Well, uh, all right, come on. If, uh, if you don't have to hurry home, we might see some in New York. Huh? Oh, oh, that'll be grand. Uh, did you call, sir? No, don't bother, Charlie. We're leaving. I'm going out to see New York. Good night. Good night. Now, there's a novelty. See New hey, York. Charlie, did he go? Huh? huh? Yeah, yeah, he went. Oh, but, uh, boy, oh, boy. Did I give him the runaround? Boy, will he be sore. <laughs> boy, did we get rid of him. Say, where's Francie? Oh, boy, did we get rid of him. But Francie went with him. <laughs> oh, boy. Huh? Yeah. He's showing in New York. Oh, boy. <laughs> Broad streets in Old Sharon with shade trees and flower gardens and great big roomy old houses with ivy crawling up the sides of the walls. Oh, it sounds swell. And it's so quiet, too. What? I said it's quiet in Old Sharon. Oh, I'd like that. Say, if you're tired walking, we could go for a bus ride. Yes. Yes, I've always wanted to live in a nice, quiet place. No, no, I asked you if you wanted to take a bus ride. What? A bus ride! A bus ride! So, you see, it's quite a wonderful place. Fascinating. Old Sharon? Yes, I, I can't imagine a finer place to live. Sounds faintly like a picture of heaven, the way you tell it. Oh, oh, look. Did I miss something? Oh, now, that's an inspiration, isn't it? What is it? Those buildings. It's one of the greatest universities in the country right there. You don't say. Wonderful, isn't it? Just to see it, it, uh, it gives you kind of a lift, doesn't it? Well, I don't believe I ever noticed. Say, what are you? Well, I, uh, I'm a professor. Oh. Well, not, not quite. I'm an associate professor in biology. My grandfather was president of old Sharon University. Oh, good night. My father's president now. Someday I'm going to be. Hey, that's really something, isn't it? Please, along here. They look dead because they don't get enough 
nourishment and because of noxious gases which destroy the chemical balance of the soil. Some botanist friends of mine are working on a tree that will thrive in the city atmosphere. Well, if they ever find one that'll live on carbon monoxide, I guess they've got something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm afraid I, I've been talking a great deal, haven't I? Well, yes, you do talk a lot, but, but I like it. Well, I, I assure you, I've never talked this much before. I just realized I'm, I'm trying to make an impression. Well, you could let me say something. I'd like to make an impression, too. Oh, well, you don't have to say anything. No. No, you speak for yourself and very eloquently, too. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, say, it's late, isn't it? I guess I missed my train. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, it's, it's all right. There's another one tonight. I'll just get hold of Keith and make sure we're on it. Well, well, goodbye. Goodbye? Why? Well, I live here. Oh. Oh. oh, oh. Well, it certainly has been wonderful. Yes. I don't know when I've had such a good time seeing New York. Oh, you know, I never thought... Seeing New York wasn't much of a thrill for you. Oh, but it was. Really, it was. Uh, look, it, it's my turn now. I, is there anything the matter with me? No. Nothing at all. Bye. Bye. Wait. Yes? Tell me, uh, do you think things out carefully? Things? You mean small things or important things? Everything. Well, if they're small things, I never do. But if they're important things, well, I, I never do either. Well, I, I think you ought to think them out, don't you? Because lots of times, small things develop into very important things. Yes, but if you think things out, they happen anyhow. You mean there are some things you can't control, huh? I don't think you can control anything. Well, that's, uh, that's the way I feel. <laughs> Say, uh, did you kiss me? Well... Well, I thought you kissed me. Oh, this is, this is silly, isn't it? <laughs> this is very silly. But I, I, I don't mind. Do you? No. Do you? No. Do you? Brown hair, blue eyes, about six feet tall. His name is Keith Beston. I ain't seen him, boss. Well, will you look for him? He can... Uh, wait, 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 wait. Never mind. There he is, right over there. Keith. Keith, Keith. Now, come on. Wake up. Wake up. Uh, who, who, who? Oh, Peter. Hi. Keith, listen. The most wonderful thing has happened. Some people would say it's a miracle. That's so? But there's nothing particularly miraculous about it, Keith. It's just a matter of chemistry. You see, anodes attract cathodes. How cozy. When we saw each other, our chemicals began to work. Yeah. Finally, I came to the conclusion that she's the most wonderful girl in the world. So, Keith... I, I... know, I know. Don't tell me you're in love. Oh, no, no. I'm married. Married to cathode? Cathode, what a funny name for a girl. Oh, her name is Francie. Oh, Francie. Oh, Francie's a very pretty name. Francie. Hey, hey, that's my girl. I've got to go now, Keith. I'll, I'll see you in the morning. Hey, hey, wait. Wait. Peter. Peter, here I am. Oh, 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 Francie. Oh, uh, what are you trying to do, lose me? Oh, no, <laughs> I'm never going to lose you. Oh, you better not. It only took a day to happen, but... Oh, I'm in love with you for always. Think you can stand it? I'll try. Peter, what did Keith say? Oh, well, he was a little startled at finding us married. <laughs> so am I. Uh, tell me, did you get a drawing room? Oh, I had a terrible time. There was only one left on the whole train. But you got it. Right here. Drawing room A. Oh, well, let's go in. Oh, wait, Peter. Yeah. Peter, I've never been married before. Frightened? Frightened? No. As a matter of fact, I'm never going to be frightened again now that I have you. You're my wall to lean against. Well, I've always tried to be a strong man. Uh, in a... Conservative sort of way. Well, my big, strong, and conservative man, you can get your shoulders ready and carry me across our first threshold. Oh, no, no, Francie. That's what people did a thousand years ago. That's old stuff. Oh, please. Oh, all right, darling, all right. Up you go. Oh, Peter. Step right in, folks. We love visitors. Oh, oh. Can't you knock before you come busting in on people? Well, I, I beg your pardon. I, oh, Peter, I, I just... Peter, put me down. All right, buddy. I know just how it is. Yeah, well, just how is it? Will you keep quiet? Can't a man make a mistake? Wait a minute. Isn't this drawing room A, car 71? Yes, this is drawing room A, car 71, and there's our ticket. Why, it's the same as ours. So what? Well, Elmer, what are you going to do about this traffic? Throw them out. Will you shut up? 
Can't you see they're going? Look, we, we just got married. I don't know why it is. Every time I go on a trip with you, something always happens. Is that so? Listen, yes, I... that's so. Now, look, dear, why can't you be a nice baby and keep quiet before I pin your big ears back? So? Oh, excuse me. You heard him. You're witnesses. I wish you had a mother to go back to. I wish I had another husband to go all back right, to. All right, all right, get one at the next station. Oh, I'll bet when you two grow up, you're going to be a couple of nasty people. Come on, Peter, let's go. Well, that's that. Well, well, we could go sit in the observation car. Yeah, I guess we could. Come on, darling. <laughs> Old Sharon. Old Sharon, Nick. Come over here, Francie. You've got to hurry. Oh, I know. Oh, Peter. Yes. Peter, what is it a professor's wife has to do? I, I forgot to ask you yesterday. Well, uh, mostly just keep the professor happy, that's mm -hmm. all. Oh, oh, you're going to like old Sharon, Francie. And, and you like my family, too. Oh, and they're going to love you. Oh, I hope so. Never having had a family of my own, I sort of have an illusion about one. Good morning, Peter. Oh, oh good morning, Keith. Hello, Keith. Why, Francie, what are you doing here? Well, I just thought of... Oh, I remember. I married you last night. Darling, kiss wait, me. Wait a minute. I married her. Well, that's all right. Then we're cousins. I can kiss my own oh, cousin, Sharon. can't I? Uh, come on, come on, Francie. Oh, there's your family, Pete. Yeah. Hey, the old man looks kind of calm. I thought he'd be pretty excited when he heard you were married. Well, I haven't told him yet. Oh, you haven't told him yet? No. And save me two good seats on the 50-yard line. Well, I, I didn't want to tell him over the phone. You know how excited Father gets over the phone. Why limit him to the phone? He'd throw a fit any place. Say, it sounds like I sort of walked into something. Right up to your beautiful neck, lady. Peter's father is Henry VIII of Old Sharon. He cuts the heads off of our young brides. Oh, yeah. Oh, now, now, wait a minute, Keith. I'm old enough to know what I'm doing. I, I thought this thing out very carefully, and if Dad has anything to say, let him say it to my face. Oh, don't worry. He will. Well, he will. Look, maybe I'd better go someplace and wait until you've had a chance to straighten things out. Well, uh, you can come to my place. It's a lovely place. Oh, no, oh, no. Maybe I'd better, Peter. Then you can tell them how wonderful I am, and, and, and then I'll come over later. No, huh? no, I, uh... Oh, I don't... I don't like this, uh... Oh, all right. <laughs> goodbye, Peter. Goodbye, Peter. Goodbye. What do you mean, goodbye? I'll, I'll see you in just a few minutes. Uh, carry your bag, Cousin Francie. Oh, wait a minute. Who is that over there? Uh, Peter's father. Well, I figured that, but who's the girl? Oh, uh, her. Uh, her name's Helen. Just a girl Peter's engaged to. Engaged? Why, he's a bigamist. Only in the second degree. She's something the old man whipped up, you know, blue blood and a black tongue. <laughs> Thoroughbred. Come on. No, no, wait a minute. I want to give her the once over. Sure, sure. But, Dad, listen. Don't tell me. If I... I can see with my own eyes. I sent you to New York to bring Keith home. Yes, well, I, I brought him, Dad. I didn't expect you to be weak enough to allow him to bring that, that, that blonde with him. Isn't well, that the girl you spoke to me about over the phone? Yes, that's the girl. Uh, but, but that was before... Uh, sh she's a nice girl, Dad. Peter, you're 26 years old. When you were 12, I informed you. And you still don't know one woman from another. This is a subject that doesn't bear discussing now. You may use the car and take Helen home. I have a board meeting at the university. But, Dad, this... Uh, wait, wait, Dad. Come on, Peter. I know it wasn't your fault. Uh, uh, what do you mean, Helen? Oh, well, Keith is allergic to blondes. And every time he gets near one, he breaks out in a race. Oh, yeah? I didn't want to tell you this before, but his best friends say that... Say, say what? Go on. Oh, never mind, dear. Why should you worry about it? Well, I, I do, in a way. Oh. Now, what's Mr. she Morgan. coming over here for? Oh, Mr. Morgan, I want to thank you for everything you've done. Listen, I... I, I, I had such a wonderful time in New York. Every time I think of it, I break out in goose flesh all over. How uh, nice. Do you ever break out in goose flesh? Well, not lately. Fancy, listen. I'll <laughs> always think of you, Mr. Morgan, as my cousin. And I suppose it's all right for cousins to kiss goodbye, isn't it? Mmm. Mmm. There. Oh, uh, goodbye, Mr. Well, that was very pretty. Helen, that girl uh, is... Uh... It's all right, darling. We'll just consider her your wild oats. But, Helen... I, I might I... say right now, I don't think I care for her. Well, come along, Peter. Ready? Mm, I'm ready. You know something, Keith? What? I have a feeling. Just a sneaky little feeling. That someday I'm going to punch my husband's fiancé right on the nose. The 
curtain falls on Act One of Vivacious Lady, starring Alice Faye and Don Amici. Mr. DeMille presents Act Two in just a moment. You know, there's an old saying that good things go in threes. Well, here are three good words that are growing more and more popular with women every day. New Quick Lux. Growing so popular that New Quick Lux is now America's favorite way of caring for nice things by a vote of two to one. Yes, all over the country, it's two to one for Lux Flakes. Twice as many women use Lux for stockings, under things, other nice things, too, as use any other flakes, chips, or beads. Well, no wonder, Mr. Ruick. There are three very good reasons why New Quick Lux is so popular. First, New Quick Lux is so fast, it bubbles into suds at the touch of water. Why, in water as cool as your hand, it dissolves three times as fast as any of ten other leading soaps tested. Second, here's the second reason women like New Quick Lux. It goes further, gives you more suds, ounce for ounce, even in hard water, than any of those other soaps. Third, third comes the reason you all know, Lux Purity. New Quick Lux flakes are gentle and safe, have no harmful alkali. They're safe for anything safe in water. Speed, Thrift and safety. New Quick Lux gives you all three. Ask your dealer for a big box tomorrow. It comes in the same familiar package at no extra cost to you. And now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Vivacious Lady, starring Don Amici as Peter and Alice Fay as Francie. It's later the same morning. Peter Morgan, Jr., has arrived at home determined to break the news of his marriage. In the living room, he faces Peter Morgan, Sr. Peter Morgan, Jr. takes a deep breath and plunges in. Now, Dad, I want to tell you something. Oh, uh, by the way, Peter, the uh, student council meets this afternoon. As a member of the advisory committee, you're going to be there, of course. All right. Now, Dad... Oh, yes, I... another thing that I wanted to speak to you about. We're having the uh, usual spring difficulties between our... Uh, Male and female students a little early this season. Why? There's entirely too much necking. <coughs> There's entirely too much uh, fraternizing in the locker room. Uh, all right, I'll take care of it. Now, Dad, I want to explain to you about that girl at the station. Peter, I'm uh, sure you'll be happy to know I've decided to give it no more thought, as far as you're concerned. Yes, but, Dad, you don't quite understand. The subject I... is closed. Oh, no, no, the subject is not closed. It can't be closed. Really? This whole matter is distasteful. Well, at the risk of proving myself a bore, I insist on talking about it. And I insist that you respect my wishes. Father, Peter, your voice is... I'm sorry, Mother. Is there anything the matter, dear? Uh, well, uh... Peter insists on talking about a thoroughly distasteful subject. Well, it isn't distasteful to me, and I will not be treated like an infant. Don't shout! Shouting is the effort of a limited mind to express itself. Oh, oh, my heart. Oh, Mother, I I'm sorry. Oh. I shall... Quick, quick, get her to the sofa. Oh. Quickly, now. Oh. Now, now see what you've done. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, did, I didn't mean... Get the smelling salts. Get the smelling salts, I tell you. You know your mother can't stand excitement. Mother, mother... Oh, oh I'm all right, dear. I, I, are you sure? Oh, oh. I'm, I'm so sorry. Mother, but, but sooner or later, Be Dad... Be quiet. I... Haven't you caused enough damage? All right, Dad, all right. Hello? Uh, hello, darling. Th this is Peter. Oh, Peter... Is it all settled? Have you told the folks? Well, no, not yet. Oh, Peter. Uh, but, but look, I, I have an idea. I, I want you to get all dressed up, be as beautiful as you are, and get Keith to take you to the prom tonight. My folks will be there. All right, darling. I'll be even more beautiful than I am. Is that my dear cousin Peter? Keith, he wants you to take me to the prom tonight. H hello, hello. The prom? Give me that phone. Hey, Peter, why bore Francie her first night here? Now, now, Keith, listen to me. I... I... I wanted to meet the folks while, while I tell them. It'll be much easier with all the music and atmosphere and everything. And, and, and they're sure to love her. Well, so far, everybody in the family who's met her loves her. Yes. Now, now Keith, you, you, you take good care of her, will you? Don't worry. I will. We'll meet you in the locker room. All right. Thanks. No, no you stay out of that locker room. <laughs> Peter, 
You mean you still haven't told me? Oh, now, now, don't worry. Everything is going to be explained tonight, just as soon as Mother and Dad get here. Oh, do you think I'll like them? I mean, I mean, do you think they'll like me? Oh, nothing like you ever happened to the Morgans before. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Oh, darling. Oh, Francie. Break it up, break it up. The locker rooms are over that way. Oh, Keith, now listen. You listen. Your fiancé is on her way over here. Oh, Oh, Peter, I've been meaning to talk to you about her. Not now, darling, not now, please. To. Oh, uh, oh, he- hello, Helen. Where, where have you been? Huh? Checking your hat. Oh, oh, checking my hat. Yes, yeah. Uh, Helen, I-, I want you to meet Miss... Uh, Miss, uh, Miss uh, Francie Brent. Yeah. How do you do? Oh, yes, I recognize you by your goose flesh. Oh, yes, it is nice having something that makes you stand out from the crowd. Your platonic friendships are becoming a little irksome, Keith. Come, sweet. Yeah, yeah I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Excuse me, Miss Brent. Come, sweet. Who does she think she is? Why, I'll mow her down. Here, here, take it easy. Look at them dancing. If she gets any closer to him, she'll be behind him. I can't stand it another second. I'm going to mow her down. No, no, come here. Look at me. Look at me. I, I, I'm shaking all over. Now get outside. I'll cut in on Peter and send him oh. out to you. Now go on, go on. <laughs> Well, you were holding her, and oh, I... Oh, now, darling, please. She was holding me. Peter. Peter, would I be too much of a bore if I suggested that you break off your engagement to that girl? Francie, dear, the engagement is broken. She doesn't know anything about it yet, but I just want to take one thing at a time. Well, you don't have to bite my head off about it. Oh, gosh, sweetheart, here we are, quarreling in public, and nobody even knows we're married. That's just it, darling. We can't even quarrel in public because you won't tell them we're married. Well, on the other hand, if we want to quarrel in public, why shouldn't we quarrel in public? All married people quarrel. That's one of the nice things about being married. Oh, Francie. Oh, darling. All right. Now, you stay right here. I'm going to tell them. And, Francie, I'm I'm sorry I upset you. Oh, no, I'm not upset about that. It's just that I've, I've got to shake. Why, darling, you, you are shaking. Well, there, 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 there's nothing, nothing to be afraid of. They're, they're, they're just my, my mother and father. They're, they're, they'll understand. Well, well, then why are you shaking? But, uh, oh, well, uh, uh, sympathetic action. Now, uh, now hold, hold your head up high and then count to 100. What for? That'll uh, calm you down and give you uh, courage. All right. Go, go on, hold it up. It's up. All right, now, now just stay like yes. that. I'll, I'll be right all back. All right, one, now, keep on counting. two... Three, four, five, six, seven. I didn't try that in a high wind. You might take off. Ah, oh. <laughs> very funny. I bet you thought that up yourself. I wonder if you could stand the shock of my saying that I dislike you intensely. Look at me. I'm brooding. Now will you go away? Not before I've had a few words with you. Peter and I are planning to be married. Oh, is that so? Well, not that I think knowing that would make any difference to you. Well. No. You see, Peter needs protection against a certain type of woman. Well, I could work on that. Are you going to mind your own business, or must I really give you a piece of my mind? Oh, I couldn't take the last piece. You, you little... (laughs) Now, now, what did you go and do that for? I only have to hit you right back. Why, you contemptible little blonde. Who do you think you are hitting me? (gasps) Now, keep quiet. You can't do that to me. Well, how dare you? Listen, listen, I don't want to fight. Well, I do. Take that. All right. All right. Put him up. (gasps) Tear your eyes oh, out. You want to fight, huh? You want to fight? Why, you, you, you cheap little blonde. I don't know. You're a whole college. Tear your hair out by the roof. Now, listen, Dad. You, you've got to come outside with me. What is this, Peter? Well, it's somebody I, I want you to meet. It, uh, it's a surprise, Dad. I've, I've sent Keith for Mother. I, I want you both to be right there. Well, it better be good. Oh, Dad, this is good. Right out here. Oh, hit me in the face, will you? Fr- Francie, Get Helen! Off. Well, it is good, Peter, but don't you think it's a little rough? Fancy, Helen, stop, Fancy! This is my father! She fouled me with a pin. Fancy, here I am, here. Oh, Peter. Listen, I'm I'm running to a class. Are are you all right? Did Helen hurt you much? No, not much, but I I was so frightened last night when I saw your father, I just ran. Oh, I worried about you all night. Uh, 
You know, for a man of Dad's intelligence, he was pretty primitive about the whole thing. He insisted on remaining upset. So I, I just didn't tell him anything. Oh, I hope I haven't ruined everything for you. Oh, now, now try not to worry too much about it. Just remember, bad beginning, good finish. Well, I must be due for a load of happiness. Oh, sure, darling, both of us. Well, I'll run along. Oh, Keith said, will you hurry up and settle everything so he could have his apartment back? He stayed over at the dorms last night, and he says the beds are lumpy. Yeah, yeah, we've imposed on Keith long enough. Uh, look, uh, you get yourself an apartment over at the Martha Gregory, and uh, I'll see you later. All right, teacher. Oh, yeah. Professor Morgan. Who's that? It's one of my students. Careful, careful. Uh, yes, Miss Wright. I just wanted to tell you I finished that paper. Would you like to read it, Professor? I'll see you in class, Miss Wright. Okie dokie. Uh, Miss Brent, if you have any further questions, I'll be glad to answer them later. Good morning. Good morning, Professor. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> He's cute, isn't he? Woo-woo! Yeah. Woo-woo! <laughs> Martha Gregory Apartments. I'll see if she's in. Evening. Just a moment, sir. Where do you think you're going? Upstairs, Miss Francie Brent. I beg your pardon, but this hotel is for ladies exclusively. I know. That's why I sent her here. I'm sorry, but you'll have to remain in the lobby. Look, I'm a botany professor. See? Books. Books. Read the sign, please. During evening hours, gentlemen will visit guests only in the lobby. Absolutely no exception. All right. All right. Will you call her up and tell her I'm down here? Yes, I will. Thanks. I suppose it's all right with you if we go out for a ride in my car. Oh, yes, sir. I recommend River Road, sir. It's very quiet. Oh, there. shut up. Gosh, Francie. Do you realize this is the first time we've been alone since we were married? Oh, darling. When I'm alone with you, I get the same sensation I got when I rode on a roller coaster for the first time. Sinking or up in the clouds? Way up in the clouds. Oh, Francie, I love you so so much. And I love you. Oh, it's funny. We have to go and park somewhere to say that. Yeah. Anybody think I wasn't your husband? Including me. <laughs> if ever a girl felt unmarried, I do. Peter, you think your father might be cooled off enough now so that we could tell him? Hot or cool, we're going to tell him tonight. He's over at the university now. He's got to make a speech tonight. Well, I'd better wait outside. It'd be just my luck to sneeze and kill his point. Okay, okay. Turn on those lights. What? Oh, Peter, it's a cop. Evening, folks. Nice evening, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Officer, uh, we're, we were studying. Yeah? Studying what? Botany. I'm in his class. Yes, class 207. Uh-huh. You see, you see, I'm a, I'm a backward student, and he's been coaching me. I'll prove it to you. I'll show you the book. Here. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, this is a new wrinkle. All the comforts are home. Now, now, wait a minute, officer. Just a second. Oh, Peter. Peter, we can tell him. Yes. Officer, I haven't been able to tell this to anybody else before, but I'm going to tell you. We're married. What? Yes. We're married. <laughs> now I've heard everything. Get out of here before I run you in. <laughs> and all for what? For nothing. For applause. What is applause to him or he to applause that he should weep for? Dad, him? will you sit down for a minute? Now, now, Peter, I've got to rehearse my speech. But I have something I want to tell you. Mr. Noble is endowing us with a new library. I want you to be there, Peter. Well, it just happens that this is much more important to me than Mr. Noble. At the moment, your problems are secondary. What is he to applause or applause Dad, to him? Dad, you know that girl that you think is Keith's girl? What is he to applause Well, she or isn't. She is my wife. What is he to applause? What? What was that you said? I said that that, that girl is my wife. And, and, Dad, I might add that, that she's the finest wife any man could ever hope to have. Peter, are you mad? I think I am, sir, and I hope it's a permanent condition. I won't allow you to toss your life away. Well, it's my life, and I wish you'd let me do it as I please. After all, it's a courtesy you must concede to any ordinary human being. Aren't you confusing courtesy and license? Oh, just a minute, Dad. Father, I... Father, are you all right? What happened? I'm all right. It's this boy. Oh, I was so frightened. Father, I'm glad you're here. You be quiet. You know your mother has a weak heart. Quiet? I've been quiet long enough. Oh, oh my heart. Oh. Oh. There, she's fainted. Oh, go get some water. Mother, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh. Are you are you all right, dear? I'm all right. Here, here, here's the water. Here, give it to me. You'll kill your mother. Well, Dad, oh. this is something Quiet. She's... Until we can discuss this further, I wish you wouldn't say anything about it to her. All right, Dad, okay. <laughs> I 
couldn't say a word. Oh, I see. We've always had to be very careful, Mother. We never could do anything unexpected. Well, not that marrying a woman is unexpected, but... Oh, I'm sorry about your mother, Peter. Really, I am. But why should I be a shock? Oh, you wouldn't be, darling. Well, well, can't you break it to her gently? Oh, I tried, but Dad was yelling so I... Francie, I'm awfully sorry. So am I, Peter. Well, here's my prison. The Martha Gregory. Why did I ever think of this as a solution? Peter, listen. Ever since I came here, I've been ducking corners, sneaking around, hiding places. And if loving you means ducking and sneaking some more, I, I'm willing to do it. I don't want you to do it. But it just seems that, that even that isn't enough. Don't you think I ought to go back to New York? I could get my job back. Now, don't you ever say that again. That's my first order as head of this family. Peter, kiss me. Goodbye, Peter. I'll see you in the... Uh, you mean good night, don't you? I meant what I said. Bye, darling. Francie, wait, wait. Francie, Francie, wait. <laughs> After a short intermission, Mr. DeMille returns with Alice Fay and Don Amici for Act Three of Vivacious Lady. Tonight we have some news for you. News about an outstanding fashion event that's coming your way soon. Here's Libby Collins, our fashion reporter, to tell you all about it. It's big news, Mr. Roick. We want to announce the 1941 edition of Luxable Fashions on Parade. This is a unique style show of the newest fashions for spring, which will be presented in 125 leading department stores during the next few months. Let me tell you a bit about this exciting fashion event. In the show, living models present a whole wardrobe of charming new spring and summer fashions designed for American living. And here's good news. You can make all these clothes yourself at ever so tiny a cost. Each dress is cut from a pattern you can buy anywhere, easy to follow. And more good news, every one of the smart new fabrics used is luxable. That means next to nothing in upkeep. I imagine husbands will like that kind of a fashion show, Libby. <laughs> yes. And they'll like having their wives and daughters pointed out as the best-dressed women in town because these clothes are beautifully designed and the fabrics are lovely. You'll find fashion right clothes for every kind of activity, for these clothes are planned for the many-sided life of today's American woman. Fashions for the homemaker, the club woman, the career girl, for sports and for play, for daytime and evening. I think you'll be excited at the new American feeling in the colors and fabrics, too. You know, we're going to American sources for our inspiration this year, Luxable Fashions on Parade will bring you many of these new ideas. And since being American means being practical, no wonder these lovely fabrics are so easy to care for. All they need is a bath in gentle, new, quick luxe. You know, leading stores everywhere advise Lux, Libby. Yes, indeed. Stores all the way from New York to San Francisco. And makers of nice fabrics advise Lux, too. Of course, because they know that it's safe for anything safe in water. Silks, woolens, rayons, colorful cottons. Watch the papers in your city for Luxable Fashions on Parade. It will tour 125 cities during the next few months. You won't want to miss it. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on the third act of Vivacious Lady. Locked out from his lawful wife by the rules of the Martha Gregory apartments, Peter decides to go upstairs anyway via the fire escape. He's just outside Francie's partly open window when he hears her talking on the phone. Hello. Did you get that ticket? Yes. Yes, the 1 a.m. for New York. And please send somebody up for my bags. I'm leaving. Thank you. Oh, Peter. Francie, I know you ought to be angry with me and leave, but please don't go. Oh, I'm not angry, but... Well, you I... ought to be. I know that if you were me and I were you, I'd be angry and leave you, but don't leave me. Oh, darling, please don't. It's darn difficult as it is. Now, go on back down the fire escape before somebody finds out you're here. Francie, if you don't stop this, I'm going right out in the hall and yell at the top of my lungs and let everybody know I'm here. I've got a right to be here. 
Now, come on, let's talk this thing over. No, 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 I've made up my mind. But, but what about our mind? We're not supposed to have separate minds. Darling, I married you and I was so proud, and I'm still proud of it. But I wanted you to be proud of me, too. Well, don't you see, it's, it's not working out. Why don't you let me go, for a while anyway? It's all my fault. Oh, no, it isn't. I started off on the wrong foot. So far, I have a perfect score for hurting the bean. Well, if you go, I'm going with you. No. I think too much of a mother to do that, even if you don't think enough of her not to. See? There I go, hurting you again. Oh, it's all right. Peter, I wish we hadn't started out like this. It's just done so quickly. Well, I'd do it again. I guess I would, too. And even then, I'd have to do what I'm doing now. Don't you see it? It can't work out as long as I stay and explode a bomb every time I make a move. So I'll go, and then, and then maybe things can straighten themselves out, and then maybe, well, oh, Peter, do I make any sense? Yeah, unfortunately, I guess you do. Just the same, I'm going to tell Mother. I'm going to tell her tonight. I'll break it gently. She's, she's got to know sometime. Oh, goodbye, darling. I've got to pack. Uh, Francie, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't I just sit down and... Watch you while you leave. I, I, I promise I won't say anything or argue. I, I, I'll just sit here. All right. Oh, darling, please kiss me goodbye. We try to be alone and can't. Now that we are alone, we have to say goodbye. But do we have to, darling? You know we do. Yes. Goodbye, darling. Will you write me? Every day. Please make it twice a day. Three times a day. What will you say? Well, I'll say, dear Francie. Oh, I... No, no, no. Make it stronger. Francie, darling. Yes, dear? Francie, darling, I'm miserable without you. Three times a day? Three times a day. <laughs> Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Oh, darling. I can't go. Don't let me go, Peter. Don't let me go. Now you're talking sense. Who's there? The clerk. I got your tickets for New York. Your train leaves in 15 minutes. Well, never mind. She's not going. You can take those tickets back. Peter. Who's that in there with you? What have I done? Who is it? Francie. Oh, sh go out the window. Quick, I I'll see you tomorrow. Open this door. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Goodbye. Miss Brent, you know this is against the rules. Open the door. Well? Where is he? Where is he? What he? What do you mean, he? Why, what's the matter with you? I have a cold and it makes me hoarse. Oh, oh. Well, now you take some hot tea, lemon, molasses, honey and butter, and put them all together. Yeah, and it's Phil's mother. Now get out of here. Well. Mrs. Morgan. Yes, Gertrude? Uh, there's a Miss Brent to see you, Mrs. Morgan. Miss Brent? Ask her to come in. Uh, this way, please. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Won't you sit down? Thank you, Mrs. Morgan. Peter told me he was going to speak to you last night. Yes. Oh, then, then you know. Oh, Mother, I'm so glad. We've been so worried about telling you, and I, I was so scared I'd lose him. I know it sounds silly to fall in love with somebody so quickly, but I just took one look at him, and I said, Oh, I said, that's the man. He's, he's, he's wonderful and, and intelligent, too. I think, I think that's why I married him. You married him? Uh, well, yes. Didn't Peter tell you? I haven't seen Peter since yesterday morning. Oh. Oh, Mrs. Morgan. I think I'd better sit down. Oh, Mrs. Morgan, I wouldn't have done this to you for the world. Oh, your heart. Would you, would you like a glass of water? I mean, do you feel all right? I... You know, I think I'm going to feel fine. May I have a cigarette? Oh, but your heart. <laughs> oh, nonsense. But Peter told me you had heart trouble. Oh, well, maybe I do have heart trouble when it's convenient. Whenever my husband raises his voice, it saves so much wear and tear. Oh. <laughs> Morning, Aunt Martha. I just came in to... Oh, oh, excuse me. I'm late for school. Come back, Keith. Oh, it's all right, Keith. Mrs. Morgan knows everything. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, how do you feel, Andy? I feel wonderful. Fancy, dear, I don't mean to be one of those inquiring relatives, but tell me, what did you do before you married Peter? I... Worked in the club Velasquez. A club? Mm -hmm. A nightclub? Well, yes. Uh, you see, Andy... How oh, wonderful. Uh, oh, wonderful. Tell me, Fancy, what's the Lakanga like? Huh? The dance. The Lakanga. I read so much about it in all the columns. 
Did they ever do the Lakanga in your club? Oh, yes. Sure. Oh, it must be delightful. I'd give anything to do the Lakanga just once. Uh, Francie, uh, why don't you show Auntie how it goes? Oh, I couldn't, Keith. Would really you, I... dear? Sure she would. I'll give her the piano. Go ahead, Francie. Well, well, the first get this. You take two steps to the left, then you kick your foot out, and then... And then you go, uh. Uh. That's right. It's a, well, you see, it's a bump. A bump? Uh -huh. Oh, how nice. One, two, three. Uh. Is that it? That's it. All together now. One, One two, three. Uh. One, One two, two, three. Uh. One, two, three. Uh. One, two, three. Uh. One, two, three. Uh. That's One, it, Hattie. Two, You're doing three. great. Why, it's fun. <laughs> One, two, three. Uh, Atta one, girl! Two, Atta girl! Three, uh, oh, one, mother! Two, mother! Two, it's three, Mr. Morgan! Uh, one, two, oh, 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 my heart! My heart! Gone, the stranger turned oh. his face to the wall and died. Well, just one surprise after another, isn't it? Mr. Morgan, there'll be no more surprises. You came in just as we were celebrating Mother knowing about Peter and me. Mother, how very domestic. I think you'd better sit down, my dear. You look like a very practical young lady. Well, I'm practical enough to see that you don't approve of me. Did you expect to be approved of? Why shouldn't I be approved of? Well, a girl from a nice Oh, Peter, you're impossibly narrow. I ask you not to interrupt. Tell me, why did you marry my son? I love him, and I want to be his wife. Miss Brent, do you know what it means to be the wife of a university professor? No, but I'm getting an idea. Then you must realize your talents run in a different direction. Mr. Morgan, you don't know anything about me. I know my son met you in a dance hall, and before he had time to catch his breath... Well, to put it so you'll understand it, you hooked him. Oh, I hooked him. I hooked him for that very desirable but very underpaid job of his, or for his social positions. I can't remember which. That's what you mean, isn't it? Exactly. In marrying you, Peter is throwing away everything he's worked for, and in the end, you'll be as unhappy as he'll be. The simplest solution of an unfortunate situation like this is a quiet divorce. Mr. Morgan, you're not grading papers or dismissing classes. He's my husband. Very well. If you insist on being unreasonable, I shall be obliged to ask Peter for his resignation. Oh, no. No, you can't do that. Peter, you... That's enough, Martha. Come along now. I must be off to the university. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come here. Go there. Thirty years I've had of it. All for old Sharon, for Alma Mater. Laugh when you want to cry. And if you want to laugh, don't laugh too loudly. Alma Mater, your sons and daughters are true blue, and we love you through and through. Even though you break my son's heart, I'm still supposed to love you through and through. Well, you can have your Alma Mater, and here is one of her daughters that isn't true blue and won't love her through and through anymore. Are you coming, my dear? Coming? I'm going. And I'm going too, Mr. Morgan. Thank you. Now, class, we come to leptosporangiate. Lepto, delicate, spora, seed, angiate, case of vessel. Is that quite clear now? Professor Morgan. Yes? I still don't understand. In ferns, which matures first, the male or the female? Excuse what? me. Excuse me. Uh, hey, Pete. Keith, what are you doing here in this condition? Drowning your sorrow. Listen, this is my oh, class. Professor? Uh, yes? In ferns, which matures first, the male or the female? Will you get out of here, Dad? Showing Mr. Noble around the school with his million dollars. He'll be here any minute. Professor? Uh, yes. What's the idea, Keith? This is the first time you've ever done this to this me. This is the first time your wife's ever left you. What did you say? I said, which matures first, the male or the female? I said your wife's leaving you on the 4 o'clock train. Uh, just a minute. But she can't. She is, and your mother's going with her. Let's get out of here. I've got to talk to you. What? What? Come on, come on, Keith. Come on down to that locker room. I've got another bottle there. Well, which is it, Professor? The male or the female? I'll answer your question just as soon as I return. Culpepper, take this class. My own wife. I'll go after it. That's what I'll do. You hear? I'll go after it. My boy, don't toss away everything you work for on a girl who will only succeed in blackening the good name of Morgan. Blackening the good name of Morgan? Well, that's fine. As if I couldn't blacken my own name. When I get through, he'll think Francie's too good for me. Take yeah? it easy. Take it easy. I'll disgrace myself. That's what I'll do. Oh, Peter, we're pals, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, I'd do anything for you, you'd do anything for me. I wouldn't you? Absolutely, as long as it doesn't take after 4 o'clock. All right. Then do me a little favor, will you? Yeah. Div divorce Francie so she can marry me. Now, what do you say? No, absolutely no. Answer... Mr. Morgan. What? Mr. Morgan, your father's in class. He's got a man with him. Oh, that's Mr. Noble. He wants to know where you are. Will you tell him I shall be there directly? Yes, sir. Uh, are you going to class like this? Sure. Give me some more of that stuff. I'm going to black it up. 
Well, class, come to order. Class is now open to discussion. Are there any questions? Professor. Yes, my dear. Now, what would you like to know? Hmm? In turn, which matures first, the male or the female? <laughs> what difference does it make, silly? Huh? <laughs> Are there any more silly questions? Oh, now, come, 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 come. Now, you all must have just oodles and oodles of questions that need answering. I know I have. I know Culpepper has. Haven't you, Culpepper? Hmm? Now, come on, speak up, man. Speak up, come on. Well, yes, I have. Uh, so you come from Texas, don't you? Yes, I do. Bless her. Bless her. Yippee! Yippee! That's dismissed. Peter. Peter, I want to see you at once. <laughs> What are you trying to do? I, sir, am a blackguard. How am I doing? In front of your class. It's unpardonable. What explanation can we make of it? Well, sir, I thought that if I could do a good job of blackening the good old Morgan name, she might fit right in. So that's it, is it? Yes, that is it, sir. Which convinces me all the more that you don't know what's good for you. Well, Dad, one of us must be wrong. While you're a member of my faculty, you must do as I say. All right, then consider me no longer a member of your faculty. Oh, now, now, Peter, you, you don't have to resign. Ah, <laughs> surprise, huh? <laughs> Surprised that any Morgan would place anything above the university. Now, Dad, you listen to me. I love it here. There's nothing in this whole world I would rather be than be a professor right here except a good husband to my wife. What time is it? Hmm? Oh, oh, it's, it's 4 o'clock and I've missed that train. I won't I... let you go, Peter. You're not responsible for what you're saying. I have no time to talk. I have to catch the train because she's on. Well, what do you care? Yes, and Mother is on it, too. What? Come on, come on. <laughs> we... Peter, Ooh, I'm dizzy. But, but, but Peter, you... Uh, oh. Peter! Will you have another sandwich, Mother? Yes, dear, thank you. Oh, I'm as hungry as a wolf. Me too. I guess it must be this freedom. I feel so free. Oh, yes. Doesn't one feel free? Oh, New York will be so much fun. So many gay places. And we can go where we want to. And do what we want and to. And wear what we want to, without any husbands to, to, uh, to watch out bother after us. us. Oh, Mother, you don't feel good about leaving. I know I don't, Francie. Neither do I. But what was I to do? I had to go through with it. Oh, it's all my fault. You were married so long, and I had to come along and cause all this trouble. Oh, don't worry about me. You've got troubles of your own. It doesn't matter about Peter and me. I, I hardly know him. Oh! Oh, what happened? Porter! Porter! Yes, ma'am. Everything's all right. What is it? What happened? We hit a car. Goodness! Anybody hurt? No, Mally. Nobody was in it. Oh, thank heaven. We'll be on our way just as soon as the track is clear. I'll say good night, Mother. Better get back. Quick, quick, but Peter, I still don't see the necessity of placing the car across the track and having it wrecked. There must be a more sane and less expensive way of stopping a train. All right, all right, Dad. Next time your wife leaves you, I'll let you figure one out by yourself. Uh, Porter, Porter. Yes, sir. We're looking for two ladies, one older and one younger. The young one's blonde, about five... Compartment C, sir. And the other one... Compartment D, sir. So long, Dad. See you in New York. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. excuse me. I got... Oh. Francie. Oh, Peter. How did you get here? Well, you're going on a honeymoon, darling. And I couldn't let you go alone. Honeymoon's kind of silly without a husband, isn't it? Oh, yes, Peter. Which is our compartment? That one there. Oh, all right. Up you go. Oh, Peter. You're going to carry me across the threshold? I'll say I am. Come on. Oh, darling. In you go. <laughs> well, a nice thing. Can't you not? Oh, Francie. Oh, Peter. <laughs> In just a moment, Mr. DeMille returns with Don Amici and Alice Faye for their curtain call. Now, while we wait, let's listen in on a conversation in an attractive tea room. Young Mr. Jones has taken his wife out for a celebration. There's a pause in their conversation, and then Mrs. Jones suddenly says, Bill, why are you looking at that woman over there? Uh, oh, oh nothing, dear. It was, it was just, well, I, I, I was admiring her hands. They're quite beautiful, don't you think? I dare say they are. But mine would be, too, if I didn't wash dishes every day for you, Bill Jones. And there's where we'd like to give young Mrs. Bill Jones a hint. She could get compliments, plenty of them, about her hands, in spite of dishwashing. The secret is simple. Change from harsh soaps to new Quick Lux Flakes. 
It's a mighty inexpensive beauty precaution, and one that millions of wives have learned. New Quick Flux has no harmful alkali to dry out your skin. It leaves hands soft, white, and lovely. That's been proved. In hundreds of scientific one-hand tests of five soaps widely used for dishes, Lux was mildest, kindest to hands. Why not get a thrifty big box of New Quick Flux? Let it do your dishes in a jiffy and help you keep hands lovely, too. It's fast, thrifty, and it saves you from ugly red dishpan hands. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. We left our college professor and a certain very lovely blonde behind the third act curtain. And now, presto, we've got Donna Michi and Alice Faye right here at the microphone. Thanks, C.B. Certainly great to do a show here in the Lux Radio Theater with Alice Faye. Oh, I'll bet you tell that to all the girls, Don. Ah, oh, now that's gratitude for you, C.B. I say something nice, what do I get? Well, you see, Mr. DeMille, if you've ever worked with a practical joker, you learn to be on your guard. Mm -hmm. Sounds as though you speak from experience, Alice. Uh, oh, that's an understatement. One time after we'd been shooting all day, I went over to my dressing room on the set to take a little rest, but John had beaten me to it. The door was gone, the curtains missing, the furniture scattered from one end of the stage to the other. <laughs> Alice, uh, there's an old saying in Hollywood, scratch Don Amici and you'll find the cat in your kid. Oh, but he's such a nice boy that you have to forgive him for those things. Yeah, I'll tell you how Alice forgives, C.B. The next day I went to my dressing room for lunch and I found the door locked and through the window I could see Alice eating the last sandwich. Hmm. Alive. The other cat in Yama kid. It's... <laughs> I'm glad you two didn't tell me all these things until now. I didn't know in what dangerous company I'd been all week. Well, what kind of company have you got for next week, Stevie? Very distinguished company, Don. Next week our star is Ronald Coleman. Making his first appearance here in almost two years. And with him we'll have Otto Kruger and Francis Robinson. The play is Libel, a great hit on Broadway, and one of the most exciting dramas of the courtroom the stage has ever produced. You'll hear Ronald Coleman as a war veteran, faced with the almost impossible task of proving, against the testimony of his friends and even his wife, that he is himself. It's a play off the beaten track, and with Ronald Coleman in the lead, one that has thrills for all of us next Monday night. Well, I know that Ronald Coleman is a guarantee of fine acting, so I'll be listening. Good night, Mr. DeMille. Good night, Don. So long, everybody. Good night. We've got another play coming up with your names on it. I know our audience will be pleased to learn that again this year, the Lux Radio Theater has been selected as the Outstanding Dramatic Program of the Year. This award comes from two polls of the nation's radio editors and critics, conducted annually by Motion Picture Daily and by Radio Daily. So to you, our audience, whose support made these awards possible, and to the radio editors who voted in both these polls, I would like to express the gratitude and appreciation of our clients and of all of us here in the Lux Radio Theater. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ronald Coleman in Libel with Otto Kroger and Francis Robinson. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Don Amici and Alice Faye will soon be seen together in the 20th Century Fox picture, Road to Rio. Alice Faye's current picture is Tin Pan Alley, and Don Amici's is Down Argentine Way, both for 20th Century Fox. The picture vivacious lady was produced by RKO Studios, whose latest hit is Kitty Foyle, starring Ginger Rogers. Heard in tonight's play were Frederick Mackay as Keith, Lou Merrill as Mr. Morgan, Bernard Helton as Mrs. Morgan, Jane Drummond as Helen, Ralph Sedan as Clerk, Betty Jean Haney as June, Sally Payne as Hat Check Girl, and Arthur Q. Bryan, Celeste Rush, Wally Mayer, Jack Carr, and Bob Burleson. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.